Hello everyone and welcome to your Advective Weather Update for March 23rd, 2023. This is a serious event that we're going to be talking about today, so be sure that you're weather aware tomorrow, especially if within the big times of your weather risk we'll be talking about shortly. Before we begin with that though, you'll notice here are current weather alerts on the National Weather Service map. A severe thunderstorm watch was just issued that we'll go over shortly that's not depicted here. Everything else though is up to date. We have a flash flood watch stretching from the Oklahoma City metro all the way up through northern Arkansas saw southern Missouri and stretching all the way up to the Cincinnati area um, and even into chunks of Pennsylvania, West Virginia there as well. So rather widespread flood watches are currently in place with some river flood warnings as well. Flash flood warnings are anticipated as we go through the next few days as widespread flash flooding is expected, stretching all the way from the Oklahoma City metro again to where those flood watches end. Let's talk about things in more detail now with the current radar and satellite. You'll notice there some storms moving into the Pacific Northwest. That's going to be producing some rain and snow. Uh, winter storm warnings in place there. You'll also notice that we do have a rather substantial mass of rain and storms that's moving through Indiana, stretching through Ohio, heading into the Northeast as well. And then our new thunderstorms are firing off right now, stretching through the state of Oklahoma all the way from near the Red River up to the Oklahoma-Missouri border. Those are going to be primarily large hailers today. We'll talk about more of that here right about now because we have a severe thunderstorm watch that's currently in place tonight, stretching all the way from across the Red Rivers, Wichita Fall, has heading into Texas, all the way into Oklahoma, including places like Oklahoma City, Moore, Norman, Chickasha, Ada, McAllister, Newcastle, Tulsa, areas like that. So, a couple tornadoes possible, some scattered large hail. They're saying up to tennis balls, and even larger is even possible, given the conditions today, and scattered wind gusts up to 65 miles per hour. All a possibility. Well, let's take a look now at the weather analysis here in a broader view. You'll notice here the severe weather expected, stretching all the way from Texas up through Oklahoma, Arkansas, into southern Missouri. You'll notice the flooding threat stretching all the way from Oklahoma into Indiana, near Indianapolis, so Oklahoma City to Indianapolis, and that flood threat today. And then you'll notice as well that we do have significant precipitation threats stretching all the way from around the Los Angeles area, all the way up to around Seattle, stretching into Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, etc., as widespread precipitation is ongoing there. Tomorrow's the big day for both flash flooding and severe weather. It's going to be rather widespread with a significant overlap of flooding and severe weather stretching through most of the state of Arkansas. If you're in the state of Arkansas tomorrow, you just need to be weather aware, period, hands down. Does not matter um, really what threats you're in specifically. You need to be weather aware and have plans for both flash flooding as well as severe weather. If you're in Mississippi, Alabama, you're in threats for both as well. Um, and then as we head northward there, you'll notice with northward extent the flooding threat takes over, and as you head with southward extent, the severe weather threat takes over. Winter weather is nothing to be scoffed at either. That's going to be along the northwestern coast of the U.S., stretching all the way well inland with heavy snowfall and more mountainous peaks of the Rockies, with some mixed precipitation there in New York and Michigan being a possibility as well. Let's talk about now Saturday. You'll notice there the thunderstorms possible stretching from the Gulf Coast um, near Louisiana, Florida, stretching northward all the way into Pennsylvania with widespread wintry precipitation on the back end of that, and then more lighter wintry precipitation stretching all the way from the West Coast into Kansas, Nebraska, Wyoming. Well, let's talk about the severe weather outbreak coming up. This is going to be rather serious. This is going to be a multi-day outbreak that continues. It started yesterday with some isolated severe thunderstorms in Missouri and Illinois. Today, we continue that with severe thunderstorms primarily in Oklahoma and Texas. Very large hail being the primary threat there. Slight risk today um, for that, although strong winds and a couple of tornadoes cannot be ruled out either. And again, that stretches from the Texas-Mexico border there near San Angelo all the way through heading into the Oklahoma City metro and even towards Springfield, Missouri. Tomorrow, we have a moderate risk, level 4 out of 5, for strong tornadoes, hurricane force winds, and large hail. The strong tornadoes being the biggest threat, the one driving the moderate risk. However, strong winds are still going to be a real possibility, again, above hurricane force, and large hail still can't be ruled out, especially with the more discrete mode of storms we'll be talking about later in the video. Finally, here as we head into Saturday, level 1 out of 5, marginal risk is in place for strong winds and large hail primarily. However, a isolated tornado cannot be completely ruled out. And for tomorrow, I want to make this very clear. A major tornado outbreak is certainly possible across the southeast. So if you're within the enhanced risk or the moderate risk especially, but really if within any severe weather risk tomorrow, level 1 or higher, please remain weather aware because a tornado does not care what risk area it's in. 
and the conditions tomorrow are going to be rather high-end for a significant tornado outbreak. Well, let's talk about today in a bit more detail now. Here are the hazards from the Storm Prediction Center. We're going to be seeing isolated damaging wind gusts, isolated tornadoes, and um, quite a few hailstorms are expected. I think that they might be going a little conservative here. This was issued at 7 a.m. The latest outlook was issued around 3 p.m. So a few things have changed here, but um, the general message remains the same. Isolated damaging winds, isolated tornadoes, and a few hail reports greater than two inches in diameter are going to be possible out of this. As some very large hail could be associated with some of these stronger thunderstorms in Oklahoma. Severe thunderstorm warnings already in place for um, large hail, um, some half dollar sized hailstones already falling there um, east of Oklahoma City near places like Maud Semel heading towards um, Oak Mulgee and the Tulsa Metro generally speaking as of the recording of this video. So very large hail is going to be the primary threat and we'll talk about this more. You'll notice here the current severe weather threat that level two out of five again Texas Mexico border up north. It's a bit larger than what you saw there last in the last slide because this has been updated. So the general message on the last slide remains the same. This is just the more up-to-date version um, and again you'll notice there that we do have that slight risk stretching all the way through places like San Angelo, Wichita Falls, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Ada, McAllister, stretching towards the, sing, um, the Springfield metro there in Missouri. Here is the hail threat. So the hatched region is where that very large hail is possible, and that stretches all the way from near San Angelo all the way to near Oklahoma City. So that's rather substantial there, and that's no joke to say the very least, a slight risk, level two out of five. However, the major thing to note there for sure is that hatched region. Again, that's going to include places like San Angelo, Abilene, Wichita Falls, Oklahoma City, and Tulsa. The level two out of five includes the Dallas-Fort Worth metro, um, although they are out of the really large hail possibility there. And then again, as we head up north there, Springfield in the level one, just outside of the level two, um, and St. Louis, Jefferson City also within that, stretching towards Springfield, Illinois, and Bloomington, Louisville, etc. there in Indiana. Talking about the tornado threat, there are two very specific corridors that the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted for the highest tornado threat here. Now, you'll notice that 2%, that level 1, that stretches all the way from around Carbondale and Cape Girardeau up there in Missouri, Illinois, all the way to around San Angelo. Um, but you'll notice there those two 5% regions, that's level 2 out of 5. So if you're in Wichita Falls, they have you in a heightened risk for the possibility of a tornado today. It's a level 2, so still not a huge deal, but something to watch for sure. And then we also have there um, to the east of Tulsa, near Fort Smith and Fayetteville, Arkansas. That's where we're um, having that second region with a level 2 out of 5 tornado risk. So that needs to be taken seriously as well. And finally, that wind risk, level 1 out of 5 throughout most of our risk region, but that level 2 there for the same secondary region that we have that tornado threat in. So again, that's east of Tulsa, including places like Fort Smith, Fayetteville in Arkansas. So rather, <clears throat> rather significant stuff going on there. Um, but again, the highest localized severe threat appears to be materializing there um, as we head into northeastern Oklahoma, northwestern Arkansas, stretching into the extreme southwestern chunk of Missouri. All right, well, let's get a second opinion here. This is from a machine learning model. Now, it has the tornado probabilities really ramped up here. For today, I wouldn't believe this. I think this is way too bullish. The Storm Prediction Center agrees with that. Um, however, I do like to show second opinions of just kind of a more objective forecasting process. This is from a machine learning model. Um, so this is using AI and machine learning to figure out what it thinks is going to happen. You'll notice on the hail threat of things that's very similar to what the Storm Prediction Center has, slightly less widespread, but a level 3 out of 5 there, basically plotted right over Wichita Falls, which is another localized area where they're expecting a possibility of very large hail. So Wichita Falls, again, I just have that heightened level of awareness. The machine learning model and the SPC both have heightened levels of awareness for you. And then again there, you'll notice the highest level of awareness for wind around where that slight risk is from the Storm Prediction Center. It's just a bit more widespread there. Again, though, generally, the forecast is in good agreement and it shows high confidence. Um, the only real huge difference here in terms of who needs to be weather aware is with that tornado threat. Again, I think that's way too bullish on this model. All right, let's talk about the uh, 
simulated radar. This is from the high resolution rapid refresh model. And as we head into the overnight hours, you'll notice there we start with more individual storms in the late afternoon. As we head into the overnight hours, this loop going till 7 a.m., you'll notice there that we start with those more individual storms, those mesh into a line. So that hail threat's going to be really big as these storms begin and are more individual. And as it merges into a line, that's when that wind threat becomes bigger. And that tornado threat is also going to get a bit bigger, especially as this main line moves into Arkansas. That's when we're expecting these storms could get particularly intense over there. All right, well, let's talk about tomorrow now. This is a moderate risk, level 4 out of 5. This is going to be for scattered damaging winds that could be over hurricane force at 75 miles per hour or higher. Several tornadoes are also possible. Some of these could be long track and particularly strong, so that needs to be acknowledged as well. And several hail reports are likely, although we aren't expecting hail to be quite as large as it was today, but the tornado threat is far higher and the wind threat is also significantly higher. So this needs to be watched very closely tomorrow. Big city. Jackson, Mississippi in that moderate risk. Vicksburg also within that moderate risk. And the enhanced risk there, that level three, you have Shreveport, Alexandria, Little Rock, Jonesboro, um, places like that, Tupelo as well. Now, this is the outlook as of 7 a.m. or so, but you'll notice here as we head to this outlook, it's slightly different. This is a slightly more up-to-date version that was issued as of 12.25 p.m. So this is um, rather... This is slightly more up to date. Um, however, the outlook looks generally the same. Everything I just mentioned before remains true, but I did want to show you the most up to date graphics since there are some minute differences. Let's move on now to the tornado threat expected with this. That red region, that's where the level four out of five risk for tornadoes is. If you are within that level four out of five risk, you need to be taking tomorrow very seriously. This is the real deal for you. This isn't your run of the mill spring severe weather event. This is a bit bigger than that. Is it going to be some big mega historic outbreak that you've never seen before? No, this isn't something that you've never seen before. However, it's on the higher end of that. You know those times when you kind of see in the press um, those bigger tornadoes that occur every once in a while? This is the kind of day that can do that. Will it? We don't know yet, but the conditions are there for strong to potentially violent tornadoes tomorrow. So you need to take this very seriously if within that level four out of five in the red. And again, that includes Jackson, Mississippi, Monroe, Louisiana, El Dorado, Pine Bluff up there in Arkansas. If you're in the level three, you're still in a serious risk here. So if you're in Memphis, Little Rock, Shreveport, um, you're, you're still in a big time risk here for tornadoes. Even if you're in Tupelo, you're right on the edge there. I'd still be considering um, staying weather aware. And even if in the level two risk, that's in the brown, you know, this, this is no joke. Um, this is one of those days that has a really big chance of producing some bigger tornadoes. So if you're within any risk whatsoever, but especially the level two or above tomorrow, you need to be remaining weather aware for tornadoes as they're going to be possible across the entirety of this risk area. And anywhere there within that black hatched region especially is where particularly strong tornadoes are a very real possibility. Let's talk about the wind threat here. You'll notice there in that black hatched region, that's where the highest of the wind threat is. Um, and so that's where if you're within that wind threat, you need to be really hunkering down for this as you could get um, winds basically equivalent to an EF1 tornado um, tomorrow. Again, over hurricane force, the force of a category one hurricane, 75 miles per hour or greater. It's a very real possibility tomorrow. And that includes the city of Memphis. That includes Little Rock, Arkansas. That includes Paducah. Um, those are the major cities there. It includes the Missouri Boot Heel, Jonesboro, Arkansas as well. So that's a very real possibility for you guys as well that you're going to be getting some big time winds. And then south of there, you're still in that level three if you're within the red region. However, the hurricane force wind probabilities go down for you significantly. But still, the odds that you get those wind gusts of 60 miles per hour or greater are fairly high. If you're in the level two, I'd be remaining weather aware. Uh, tomorrow for the strong wind threat. It's not going to be anything huge or out of the ordinary for you. However, you still need to be watching if you're in Birmingham, Huntsville, Nashville. You know, a run-of-the-mill severe thunderstorm when it comes to your wind threat is still possible. However, again, that tornado threat is just up the notch or two. So I'd really be watching out for tornadoes specifically. But again, if you are within a severe thunderstorm warning for strong winds, do your standard precautions. Remain indoors. Stay away from windows. Make sure that your lawn furniture is battened down. You'll be good to go for tomorrow. Let's talk about the hail threat. This is the lowest of the threats. It's at a level two out of five. Now, that's still substantial. It's the same as today's. Um, you'll notice there Little Rock, Shreveport, Jackson, Memphis. Those are the big cities there within that level two out of five. 
Um, and that's a slight risk. You know, it's it's nothing huge. It's not going to be the biggest of deals. But still, hail can be significant, even one inch in diameter, one and a half inch in diameter, which is very possible within that region tomorrow. And then again, some smaller hail possible around the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Birmingham, Huntsville, Nashville, Jackson up there in Kentucky, Paducah, most of the state of Kentucky within that level one risk. So again, you know, very real possibility there of some large hail as well. But again, the tornado threat, we cannot stress enough. That's the biggest threat tomorrow. Very real possibility of a full-blown tornado outbreak. Let's talk about that second opinion. Here is the machine learning model for tomorrow. And you'll notice there it's a bit more conservative than the Storm Prediction Center right now, having a level 3 out of 5 as its tornado threat instead of the level 4 of the Storm Prediction Center, although it's over the same general region. So confidence is high that this region there... Um, uh, through Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi. That's going to be the corridor. Um, the places I mentioned earlier, that's the corridor where the most favorable conditions for tornadoes are. This is just a bit less on that. Now, since this model's come out, this machine learning model, the current weather models that kind of go into this to make this come out have uptrended a bit. They've begun to look a bit better. So I wouldn't be shocked if tomorrow morning this starts to look a lot more like the current Storm Prediction Center outlook. The hail threat's a level two and the wind threat's a level three. So that coincides pretty well with the Storm Prediction Center outlook. Don't pay too much attention to the exact placement of this. This model isn't fantastic at that just yet. <clears throat> However, it's pretty good at gauging risk and it's pretty close to what the Storm Prediction Center has. So that's an indication that tomorrow we have pretty high confidence in severe thunderstorms occurring. All right, let's talk about analogs now. This is an analog-based version of a severe weather forecast. And again, it's a level three out of five. It's been indicated there. Again, same general region. So relatively high confidence through analogs, machine learning, and, and the human forecasters, the professionals, that the big time severe weather threat is gonna be in Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi there, around the Jackson Metro, stretching towards Shreveport and Little Rock. So that's gonna be where the big time risk is. And here are those analogs. You'll notice this is very similar to what I showed you yesterday. Um, the Super Tuesday outbreak isn't really on here anymore, but February 25th, 2011, still on there. That was a big time tornado outbreak. Um, <clears throat> and you'll notice there, some of these, again, light up quite a bit when it comes to the severe weather probabilities for tomorrow. However, some of these aren't lit up much at all. So again, that shows that kind of uncertainty on just how high this is going to perform, but there's high confidence that the conditions are going to be there for strong to severe storms. It's just a matter of whether those storms can take advantage. Well, let's take a look at a weather model here for tomorrow. This is valid from 7 a.m. on Friday to 7 a.m. on Saturday. You'll notice here as we head into the afternoon hours, mid-afternoon hours, you have that kind of broken line of storms along the front, and then you'll notice those discrete storms ahead of the front there moving through central Mississippi. <clears throat> now, if this is what ends up happening, Tomorrow is going to be an ugly day, and the reason for that is because those storms ahead of the line, those are going to be very individualized and capable of producing the strong tornadoes. So we're going to have to see if those strong storms can initiate ahead of the main line, but if that happens like this model depicts, it's going to be a bad day tomorrow. So we'll keep an eye on this, and that's the big uncertainty. You know, this isn't exactly what's going to happen. This is just one model, but it gives you an idea of what tomorrow could look like. This is looking more towards a worst-case scenario. All right, well, now that we've talked about that, let's talk about what's happening on Saturday. You'll notice they're stretching all the way from around the Panama City area in Florida, all the way north to around Columbia there in South Carolina, along the North South Carolina border there as well. Level one out of five severe risk currently in place. That's primarily going to be for strong winds and large hail. <clears throat> And here is the weather model. You'll notice storms just fizzle out throughout the day. Not a huge severe risk, but coming off the back of the strong to severe storms that will be happening on Friday, you can't rule out that some of these will remain rather strong as they do move into that region. That's why that level one is in place. I wouldn't be shocked to see that level one get a little bigger with time as well, but not going to be a huge day on Saturday. Nothing close to what's happening today and especially tomorrow. All right, well, let's talk about what you can do. If you're in a severe thunderstorm watch or a tornado watch, um, the actions are pretty similar there. So that means that a severe thunderstorm or a tornado is possible, and you need to make sure that you're getting your action plan together. So that way, if you're putting a severe thunderstorm warning or a tornado warning, you know what to do in that case as well. That means that the phenomena is about to happen or is happening. That's when you take action. That means that you need to get to lowest level, sturdy building, interior room, especially if in a tornado warning um, and with 
when within a severe thunderstorm warning. Again, that means stay away from windows, make sure you're indoors, things of that nature. Speaking of tornadoes, here's the shelter and guidelines. You want to make sure you're staying out of mobile homes, vehicles, and you don't want to be underneath a highway or overpass either. Large open rooms aren't good either. The best place to be is the lowest level of a sturdy building in an interior room. That could be a bathroom, a closet, but preferably in the basement, away from windows with as many walls between you and the outside as possible. The best options that you can get are going to be those designated tornado shelters. However, we know most people don't have access to those. Those aren't overly accessible. So again, <clears throat> basements or interior rooms, that's your best option in these situations. All right, let's talk about severe weather preparation. A lot of this is going to be happening in the afternoon and evening hours and even into the overnight hours, especially tomorrow. So make sure that you have multiple ways to get weather alerts there, whether that's the internet, your local TV, your um, sirens, wireless emergency alerts and weather apps, a NOAA weather radio, something like that. <clears throat> and make sure that you, if you aren't within the risk area, but you know family and friends, you contact them about this as well. All right, well, now that we've talked about that, let's talk about the next order of business. This is severe flooding that's expected both today and tomorrow, a level three out of four moderate risk in place for both days. No flash flooding is currently depicted for Saturday. That's good news, although I wouldn't be shocked to see a level one out of four introduced with time. <clears throat> Regardless, though, today and tomorrow, the real deal for flash flooding. Um, and, you know, the big thing that people forget with flooding is that it can be just as, if not even more deadly than the severe weather threat that we're going to be having simultaneously with this. Let's talk about it a bit. The moderate risk there, that stretches from Tulsa to around Springfield, Lebanon, Rolla there in Missouri. So Tulsa, Oklahoma to around Rolla, Missouri. That's where your moderate risk stretches. <clears throat> that's going to be riding there. Um, along the uh, Interstate 40 corridor, I believe. Um, and again, you're going to see uh, more of that uh, as we head into tomorrow. Things are going to be placed a bit bar farther south. But that moderate risk of flash flooding, that's going to stretch all the way <clears throat> from around Little Rock, Arkansas, just north of Little Rock. It's going to stretch through Jonesboro, Arkansas, Cape Girardeau, Missouri, Carbondale, Illinois, Evansville, Indiana, Paducah, Kentucky, Louisville, um, Indianapolis, Indiana, you're just outside of that, and that stretches into around Cincinnati and Columbus. So anywhere from north of Little Rock to Cincinnati and Columbus, you're going to be within that moderate risk for flash flooding tomorrow with the slight risk surrounding that stretching all the way from Pittsburgh um, to around Texarkana. So rather substantial flooding threat definitely in place here. So what can you do in this situation? Well, if you're in a flood watch, that means that flash flooding is possible. You saw earlier in this video that widespread flood watch stretching all the way from around Oklahoma City to around Columbus, Ohio. <clears throat> that means flooding is possible, but not imminent. If you are in a flood warning, you need to take action. That means move to higher ground and make sure that you're not driving through flood water. So your three major steps are going to be get to higher ground, don't drive into water, and stay informed. Have multiple ways to get weather alerts. Another big thing is to make sure right now before that flooding could arrive, that you have a good way to get your uh, documents together so that we can keep those safe, move those to higher ground as well, so that we don't lose important documents in the flooding. All right, well, I did want to briefly mention here before we do end off the video that tomorrow there's also a critical risk for fire weather in, our, in around the Midland area over there in Texas. So I thought that was rather important. And so I wanted to mention it briefly. Um, Abilene, uh, just outside of Abilene there in the elevated risk there, just to the west, San Angelo in the elevated risk, Fort Stockton, Lubbock, and just south of Amarillo. Childress also within that elevated risk. So level two out of three in place for fire weather tomorrow. <clears throat> and most fires are caused by humans. So make sure you're not throwing cigarette buds out the windows. Make sure that you're not littering. That's all important stuff to make sure that everyone there in Texas remains safe, that widespread wildfires do not begin. So... That's what I have today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this video was useful to you and that it was of help. If you know of anyone that is within the severe weather, flooding, or fire risks over the next few days, please share this video with them. If you are within any of those risks, be sure to take the actions recommended in this video or go to ready.gov slash make a plan for more information. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was useful. Be sure to like this video if you liked it. If you didn't like it, you know where that button is. And be sure to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. We'll be having more videos on this event as it unfolds and will be live tomorrow. I hope to see you there.